All right, folks, welcome to the stream. I'm Commander Red Falcon, and we are continuing our journey to Beagle Point. Let me first get you show you where we are. Let's see. So our destination's Colonia. And we're actually not far from it at all. We're just at 2.5 thousand light years. So we should be able to get there on in this stream. And just to give you a point of reference, this kind of really shows you the scale too. Uh, we are almost 20,000 light years away from the solar system, so. All right, we are all gassed up and ready to go. Um, this is the last pit stop before Colonia. And I'm just going to go in and punch in our next destination. And I'll be right back. Okay. Why isn't a route available? Did I miss something here? Hmm. Okay, now I feel kind of dumb. There we go. Oh, okay. There we go. I think. Okay. Alright, looks like it's going to take me to another neutron star. Yeah, before I go over there. Alright. Let's get out of here. Well... Speaking of manners, I should probably turn on my light. No, that's not a trick of the light. That is just how dense the stars are here. Oh, my uh, exploration rank is 40% in the Pioneer. So, 60 more to go before I hit Elite. Which... I thought I was going to get before um, I hit Colonia, but now that's probably going to happen. Oh boy. That was a close one. <laughs> Alright. But yeah, probably I'll probably get a lead at um, Sagittarius A. Just fitting. Alright, first jump of the stream. Let's see where we're going. Man, that is dense. So I only play in VR when I'm doing the stream. Just because it's a lot easier to plot things and all that. So I haven't had a chance to actually, like, experience 
the star density in VR before it's it's a different experience. <laughs> Alright, where are we at? Rocky bodies, couple high metal content, asteroid clusters. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna be worth it. Did I miss anything? No, I didn't miss anything. Alright. First neutron boost of the stream. See if I can nail it. Alright. Woo. Man. Like, the star field is almost dizzying just seeing how dense it is. It's wild. Alright. I wonder what Sagittarius A is going to look like, because it's going to be even denser than this. So I got smart, and you and I'm using a plastic bottle with a silicon straw this time. So it doesn't make a lot of noise. Why did it take me here? This isn't a neutron star. Hold on, let me take a look at something. Okay, that was weird. Oh well. So, this route was supposed to take me to a neutron star, but maybe I accidentally selected one that was close. Let's see, icy bodies, icy bodies, gas giants. Nah, nothing. Nothing real interesting. That's another problem with these stars being so dense is sometimes you'll mean to route plot a route to one but then you end up getting one that's like next to it so well what are you gonna do right Oh, I do have a couple new pictures in the album from uh, my off-stream travel. Rocky bodies, gas giants. Doesn't look like there's anything good here. One of those pictures is um, of my ship approaching a neutron star with this um, sky box. It's pretty incredible. There we go. <laughs> Not the most elegant execution of that maneuver, but good enough for our purposes. Alright. Next one up.
Okay, so looks like we're going to be on the Neutron Highway for a while. Um, pretty much all the way to Colonia. Um, actually, I don't know if you can see it in the stream, but you see that yellow, like, bookmark symbol right there? That's Colonia, right there. Wait, I didn't mean to say yellow, I meant orange. I always get those two colors confused. Always have. I don't understand why. Orange and yellow, I don't understand why. Those always get turned around in my head. And it's not that I'm colorblind or anything. Like, I can tell the difference between the two, but for some reason, intellectually, they always get, like, mixed up in my mind. Like, the names of them. Not necessarily the uh, color themselves. Oh, so, according to the statistics from ED Discovery, this ship has now exceeded the uh, number of light years as the Kestrel. So the Kestrel, um, since I had EDSM, well, since I had been using EDSM, had traveled something like 20, almost 25,000 light years. This ship just exceeded that. Now, <laughs> 25,000 in the grand scheme of things isn't really much. Um, I'm really going to be putting some, some light years on this ship. Okay, come on. Where are you? Where is that high metal content world? Watch it not be terraformable, too. <laughs> Wasted all this time trying to find it. All right, it's got to be, like, somewhere, right? There's a nebula right there. Uh, I don't think it's on the orbital path. So another problem is these... Um, these stars being so dense, and being the color they are, well, because of the neutron star, probably, um, it's really hard to find. Come on. Where are you? I'm just going in circles now. Oh, there it is. Ha. Nope. Yeah. Come on. waypoint okay why can't you route a How's my fuel doing? Good. Okay, so I've worked out a little trick. When my fuel gets low, and I'm on one of these, um, basically on one of these neutron highway stretches, what I'll do is, after I get my um, FSD boost off of a neutron star, I'll find where the next neutron star is on the highway, and then I'll find a scoopable star within my ship's normal jump range around that star. So I get the boost 
And then I just, I can fuel up on that star, and then I can hit the neutron star. I probably don't have to do it as often as I do it, um, especially with the stars being this dense, but... Uh, I just would feel better if my tank never gets below half, let's put it that way. Um, I let the tank get pretty low on one of my off-stream... Ooh, a water world. Cool. Yeah, we're going to scan you. Um, on one of my other journeys uh, when I was off-stream and... Uh, you know, I, I had plotted it out. I had figured out exactly how far I needed to go. Like, I was um, going to be coming to a pit stop um, habitable system. So, wasn't bad. Ooh, that looks like a good candidate for terraforming. There's my old buddy validating. Um, damn, what was I going to say? <laughs> I don't remember now. Um, oh yeah, so, like, I was, I was not in danger of running out of fuel and getting stranded, but it still made me feel weird getting my fuel that low. So, won't be doing that. All right. Nope. Okay, and that's a water world, so... Not terraformable, but still worth looking at. You have not map mapped this planet? Really? So that's the only one worth scanning, huh? That one could have fooled me. I mean, look at that thing. It, it's got, like, clouds and stuff, but I don't know. Uh, is it worth traveling 3,000 light seconds? Probably. Oh, I need to put in my next route anyway. Okay. Let's see. Oh, let me go ahead and decrease my speed a bit so I don't overshoot it. No telling how long I might be stuck in this screen. Neutron star. Damn it. That's not what I wanted. Find that. Go back. Mm. the hell? Oh. Somehow I got switched over to power play. <laughs> it's like, there's no power play out here, guys. There we go. So I went, uh, went ahead and marked several point of interests um, according to EDSM. So that's what you see up there. Ooh. Good timing, too. Look at that. Oh, there's our buddy, the Skull Nebula. Right up there.
And now we wait. I can put it right here. Yep. Yeah, these par sevens usually take five probes. I, I tried experimenting with altering the angle at which I hit the horizon. Haven't quite nailed it right because there's still a little overlap. Weird. Had to had to press extra hard on the button there. Alright. So after this neutron star, I'm gonna have to get some fuel. Cause I'm already roughly at half. Which is fine. High middle content world. Ooh, and a water world? Mm. Man. Now, the only way that could be better is if it was a uh, terraformable water world. Ooh, that water world's looking pretty promising, though. Oxygen rich atmosphere, though. Ooh. Don't light a match, the whole thing would go up in flames. Looking promising. A little, little blue marble there. Nitrogen rich atmosphere. That might be a good candidate. Is worth scanning. This one looks promising. Yes, this can this body is a candidate for terraforming. Wait, is that the water world? Oh yes, that's some real money right there. You've not yet mapped this. Ah, okay, well, hey, that one. I I think that's I think that's like six hundred thousand credits just for the surface data for that planet alone. Good money. Ninety-six percent. So after Colonia, because I've been real spoiled up to this point, because I've been, ha I've had um, roughly every 2000 ish light years there's a um a populated system that you can stop at to repair your ship and sell your data and everything um after colonia <laughs> um pretty much the only place for that's going to be at or around sagittarius a there's like um i forgot the system name but there's a system that has a um um, a research station for studying the black hole. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be relying a lot more on the auto field maintenance units. My margin for error is going to be a lot smaller. Um, I'm probably going to do this off stream, but at some point, I need to land on a planet with uh, minerals and um, 
build up enough. Where is that at? Synthesis. Um, build up enough uh, resources so I can make FSD injectors and um, there's something else in there. The uh, Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. The um, auto field maintenance unit parts. It's technically ammo, but I like to think of it as parts. Like nano machines and that sort of stuff. <laughs> Ink for the 3D printer, how about that? Or should I say material for the... Okay, now that was a lot better. I, I actually did really good on that one. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how that scan turned out. Still had a bit of overlap, though. This is a par 6. But if I can get 7% with this guy, I'll be set. Oh, look at that. Very nice. <laughs> All right. All right. Now I just need to grab that other waypoint. All right. Okay. So here's this guy. But we actually want to go here. What are you? You're a class F. Oh, be a fine girl. Kiss me. Yep. That's a scoopable star. And we're like super close to the other star. We're within a uh, normal jump range. All right. Yeah, that button's not registering on my joystick. Usually it's the one right below it, the one that I use for um, dropping in and out of Super Cruise, but the one above it, the jump button, that one's like starting to stick a little or not register. It's an old joystick. I've had this thing I don't know why I'm looking at the virtual joystick. That's not actually my joystick, but <laughs> it's technically right there, so I guess that works. Um, this guy. I've had this joystick a long time, so whoa, hello. So I'm not surprised it's starting to show its wear. Scoop's done. Let's uh, get right here and see if there's anything worth looking at. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. Ooh, an ammonia world? Water world? Probably two of them. Ooh, <laughs> some icy bodies. Damn. All right. All right. I picked good. I picked good. <laughs> Well, I might be here a while. <laughs> Not necessarily for the scanning, but for the mapping. Rude. Oh, I hope it's only icy bodies over by this star. I don't want to fly over there.
Oh, I do have to go over there for this water world. Damn. Both water worlds are over there. Oh, that's an ammonia world. Might be terraformable. Well, it's non terraformable, but ammonia worlds are still worth a good bit by themselves. This system's going to be probably worth... Ooh, looks promising. Methane-rich atmosphere. Could probably terraform that. Hmm. Maybe not. Alright. Let's see what's worth scanning. We'll start with this star, since it's closest. Okay. Not mapped. Body for... Candidate for terraforming. Alright. Candidate for terraforming. Not a candidate, but still a water world. Wait a minute. I'm not even going to ask. That's a, t a candidate for terraforming. This guy is not, but it is. Wow, okay, so that's uh, five, four, three, and two. Okay, orbiting this star. Um, I might as well look at these guys too, because damn. Ammonia world. I gotta. I'm gonna scan it. Uh, yet. Yeah, these are ice bodies. So, so I'm gonna have to go all the way to this star to get this guy. Oh, maybe not that one. The ammonia world. These look promising though. Let's see. Oh man. Okay, so terraformable. Terraformable. That's a. That's its moon. I'm not surprised. Uh, water-based world, sure, I'll go ahead and pick that one up. And then Rocky Ice World, wow, okay, there's, there's a lot of candidates. Alright, let's see here. Two, three, five, four, okay. Works for me. Turn this down a little bit. 
don't want to approach that star too fast. Okay, well, I'm going to be here a while. <laughs> oh. I mean, this system alone, with just scanning those um, probe, uh, yeah. uh, mapping, that's the word I was looking for, mapping, with just mapping those systems, I mean, we're looking at maybe four to six million credits, probably. Stupid amount. A good stupid amount. Almost there. I forgot what the th what the uh, range, the optimum range is. I think it's when it moves to when you're no longer moving at light seconds. Maybe it's point five light seconds. Let's see. Okay, so like point four light seconds is where you want to be. Okay, this one's seven. Wow, this planet looks smaller than that. Alright. Okay, let's see how good my coverage is. So you'll notice I altered the, the angle a little bit. So far, so good. Oh, beautiful. There's like no overlap. Perfect. Put you right there. Okay, the back's a little less promising. But. Eh? So, what do I need? A little too much overlap on that one. Yeah. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. Let's hope that's 7%. <laughs> Done. All right. So, two. I think it goes up to five. Was it five? I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, it's five. Yeah. Four, three. Oh yeah, my balance is now up to 120 million. I'm gonna have a lot of money built up from data when we're on the return leg. Because I don't think there are any outposts. Um, well, I take that back. There might be some um, fleet carriers that people have put out there. Which, why they just didn't let players own stations instead of these fleet carrier things, I'll never know, but I don't know. Who knows? I don't even think the developers know.
Oh, and it's right next to a... I think there was a water world right next to it. Yeah, four. Eh, yeah, five and four. Yeah, they're right next to each other. Perfect. Yeah, this worked out good. Okay. Little too early. <laughs> I'm trying to find the sweet spot where I can cut my th throttle and I'll get like perfect distance, but haven't figured that out yet. Okay, let's try this. And then down a little bit. Well, <laughs> White Star 101 found it, huh? See if that'll get 6% of the surface. Let's see. D2223B. I'm not going to remember that. Alright. Okay, that was 5. This is 4. Four. No, I'm fine. I don't need to slow down. Okay, so at one light second, that's too early to cut throttle. Maybe point eight. Nope. Honestly, I'm thinking sixty. It's probably going to be the best, best sweet spot. Oh, this is a par 7. Oh, I didn't look at that first. Well, we'll see. Just for good measure, let's shoot one right there. Oh, there's the skull nebula. Kind of peeking out at us. As long as I get that efficiency bonus. Okay, so we did four, we did five, we did two. And I believe three is You'll have to pardon the dog. So it's two, three, four, and five. Yeah, because I don't think six was. Well, it's right there, so we're not far from it. Actually, hold on, let me see. What is six classified as? Doesn't say. I'll have to look at the other map. Actually, so here's the question. Okay, so B, okay, so yeah. 
star B is the next closest one, and then I believe star C, yeah. Ooh, I don't know if I want to travel 300,000 light seconds. Ooh, do I want to do that? That's, I mean, this star is 53. Well, we'll have to see. I didn't really look at their orbital. I should probably look at that. that speed a little. Alright. There, now we're not in danger of overshooting it. So, it's interesting, if you travel too fast to a planet, the gravity well will actually accelerate your ship, and the only way to slow down is to, like, basically do a, um, Almost like a braking maneuver, for lack of a better term. Alright. Okay, so at point 0.5, I'll kill the engines, and we'll see if that'll be perfect. Not bad. Okay, I think I figured out the the sweet spot. bad. Oh, that's an interesting bug. I can like barely see where the lines are. Alright. Just for good measure, we'll hit it on both sides. It's still under six, so I still get the efficiency bonus. Perfect. All right, let's take a look at the system map. I feel like we've been in this system forever. All right. Let me make sure there's nobody on this star that I missed. Okay, you have mapped this planet, 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 you have not mapped this planet. Okay, good. Okay, so they're good. So, let's look at the... Ooh, yeah. So really, no matter what I do, um, C is pretty far out. I'm technically closer here, but not by much. All right. Um. Oh, I needed that. All right. Let's go ahead and. Oops. I'll go ahead and get the ammonia world. Rocky Ice Body. <sighs> okay, let me let me make a judgment call here. That's one, two. Oh, and that's a water world. 
that can be terraform. I mean, those are worth the most. Oh, that's two water worlds. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I gotta. Like, it wouldn't make financial sense not to. So. But, let's see. Where's C at? There's C. Seven, six. One, two. Three. Yeah, of course, they're on the far side of that planet's. Oh, we're going to be doing this a while. Well, I guess that would be a... Well, let's see. Do I have my next... Uh, I don't have my next waypoint in yet. Actually, hold on. Yes, I do. I've got the time. I might as well put it into my computer. Let's see here. There we go. Yeah, it's like four light years. Damn it. Don't want power play. No power play out here. Ah, damn it. That's not the button I wanted. There we go. Neutron star. Okay, cool. Just wanted to get that. Yeah, just wanted to get that in the... Uh... Oops, that's not what I wanted. Wanted to at least get that in the ship's computer as my next destination. Alright. Of course, knowing me, I'll probably forget that I did that. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted you, the Ammonia World. You have not map, map this. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. That looks like a planet you could terraform, but whatever. I mean... I completed the Hutton Orbital trek in Alpha Centauri, and that's like an hour and a half, and it was way longer than 300,000 light seconds. I think the distance was so great, it actually was measured in light years, which I know is pretty crazy. It was like point something light years, so it wasn't a full light year, but it was pretty damn close. Oh, and my ship reached a super cruise velocity of like 1,700 and something C. So 1,700 something times the speed of light. Which, if you'll notice... My speed when we're jumping between star systems, it jumps anywhere between like three to seven to sometimes nine thousand light second uh, light years. C, I'm sorry, C. So, just to give you an idea of the scale we're dealing with here, <laughs> this game does have a way of making you feel very small. You know, at some point I do need to play CQC just so I can have a rank other than helpless. I don't like being known as helpless. I think they put that on purpose because they want people to play the um, CQC game. Which I don't even know if there's people that play it. I've heard mixed things. Like there's some people that do CQC and they love it, but then I've heard that it's mostly dead, so I don't know. Oh, I guess for the new people, I should explain what CQC is. So CQC is the um, 
Well, it's close quarters combat. It's Eve. Eve. Wow. What am I thinking of Eve? It's um, elites. Like multiplayer combat competitive like component. Basically, you fly ships in a simulator. At least I think it's a simulator. And you, you blow each other up. It, it's kind of like deathmatch type thing. Um, so. And apparently, if you reach, like, elite rank in that, you get access to a special system, I think. That's where they hold the, like, the big competition. I don't know. Um, fun fact, though... Um, you only need combat, trade, and explorer to get triple elite. Uh, CQC rank's not counted in that. So, if anyone cared about that. All right. Well, at least we can admire the stars while we wait. I'm trying to remember what I did when I flew to Hutton Orbital. I think I just put on a podcast or something. Because <laughs> it literally takes you an hour and a half to fly from the star to... Um, uh, Proxima Centauri, I think, is the third star. Anyway, but there's a... Oh, crap. Ah, I wasn't paying attention. Bad me. Loop of shame. I plan that poorly. Oh, I'm too close to do a proper scan. Ah. Have to come around for another pass. I don't know why I'm looking back. I can't see it. Okay, good. Speeding up, so we're escaping the effects of the gravity well. Eh, this will have to do. And then we wait. Did I accidentally shoot two? Ah, uh, damn this joystick. Yep. I did a dumb. Hopefully that'll hit, and that'll be seven. We'll see. Well, damn, I was worried that we would hit Colonia, and uh, I'd run out of stuff to show you guys, but... Then I ran into this star system and <laughs> see how that goes. All right, let's get pointed in the right direction first. All right, there we go. Let's at least get ourselves pointed in the right direction. Now, let's take a look at that system map. I believe it's the first planet, All right? One, two, and three. And then, yep, so one, two, and three are the planets we want to look at. All 
All right. Well, now we get to play the game of how fast can I get up to Super Cruise? <laughs> All right. Let me do that. Let me check the chat, see if anyone's saying anything. Alright, well, no one said anything in the chat, so that's good. Well, guess we'll just sit here and wait. Uh, let's see. What's a good topic? Well, talk about some of the games I've played. Um, and of course, that's probably why I, um, I don't know, I made pretty good progress. Um, the Steam sale was pretty recent, so I picked up a couple things. Um, picked up the Halo Master Chief Collection, because I had only played Halo 1 and 2 to completion. And I think I might have played a little bit of 3. Actually, no, I didn't actually play 3. So, uh, but the Master Chief Collection is pretty much all of them. So, I've started playing uh, Halo Reach on that. And it's, it's pretty good. Um, though, it's one of those things where it, it kind of falls in the prequel. The, the, the prequel paradox, I guess is what people have called it. Where... Um, the technology seems to be better in the prequel than in the original Halo, because <laughs> they've got um they've got a um because it was my understanding that in Halo three or four they introduced these um, like modules for your uh, Spartan suit that um, give you like special abilities like uh, one's a sprint, another one's like armor lock, which makes you pretty much invincible. Um, another one was like a um, uh, cloaking device, um, which if you played Halo 2, you, when you played as the, um, the heretic? Yeah, I think it was the heretic. That guy, the elite dude. Um, very similar to the way his worked. Um, so yeah, just, you know, interesting stuff. Haven't gotten too far. Well, I'm about... I think I'm about roughly halfway through it. Like, the campaign isn't that long. It's only, like, 12 missions. So I've been enjoying that. Um, then I picked up Boneworks, which is a, a VR game. Um, they do a lot of... Um, they've done a lot of uh, experimental stuff in the game. So I really wanted to experience it. Um, the problem is, with Boneworks, is it's full immersion VR. Like, you actually have a body that exists within the virtual space. Um, if any of you ever watched me play, um, I did a Let's Play for, actually a stream Let's Play for um, Half-Life Alex. Um, you notice that in that game, you're basically just like a floating head and like two floating arms, or floating hands, I should say. Um, while in this game, <laughs> you actually have a full body with limbs and everything. Um, a little disorienting at times. Um, I found that I um, I need to work on my VR legs. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> um, hold on a minute. Was it four? I think it was four. Um, because the uh, especially the movement in that game <laughs> made me a little uh, motion sick. I can only really play it for about maybe. 30 to 40 minutes at a time, depending on what's going on. Um, so it's just, you know, I, I, I normally don't get motion sickness. Um, and I think I could, I think I'd do well with the game if I was sitting the whole time. Because um, I think with me, it's just all inner ear stuff. Um, another weird thing about that game. Um, and I've noticed it with any type of, like, um, room-scale VR 
where you use the um, like joysticks to move around. Um, I noticed that I my body tends to like lean forward and lean back um, as I'm moving, and that actually causes like the arches of my feet to hurt like hell. <laughs> um, so it's uh, definitely um, yeah. And I can't imagine um, what someone someone who actually gets motion sickness playing like first person shooters. I can't even imagine how they would feel playing that. Um, the only time I ever got motion sickness from playing a first person shooter was um, I was actually in college and I was recovering from a really bad hangover, and I tried to play uh, what was that game called? Oh, I can't even remember. It was some World War II first-person shooter. It wasn't one of the big ones. Um, it was actually a multiplayer one, if I remember now. Um, played in the Russian army, fighting Germans. It was one of those like hyper-realistic ones. I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, it wasn't Day of Defeat. It was uh, one of the other ones. But yeah, like so, I I played that with a hangover, and it, yeah, <laughs> I played like maybe like ten minutes of that, and I felt like I was gonna vomit again. So about that's the only time I've ever um, a first-person shooter's ever made me sick, and that was of no um, those were um, external factors involved. <laughs> so um, real quick though, I'm gonna check system map here. Yeah, one, two, and three. Okay, yeah, so it was one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Okay, cool. Well, what I can do is I can go ahead and set my route. One, two, where's three? There's three, okay. One, two, three, got it. I mean, at this range, it doesn't matter, but... Yeah. So you notice we're down to four minutes and, like, 40 seconds, and we're still gaining speed. We're, we haven't even hit the, um, the midway point. And you'll know you hit the midway point when um, you'll notice that your speed starts to go down. So we've escaped the gravity well of the star behind us and then we start to get affected by the gravity well of the star coming up at us oh yeah so speaking of the um gravity wells and all that so um astronomers i read an article and apparently st astronomers have figured out where the center of our solar system is so oh what the hell is that thing called so Hmm. Basically, the, the the orbital point where all the bodies orbital, orbit, um, they figured out where it is exactly. And you would assume it would be um, the center of our star because that's the, um, you know, the biggest gravity well there. But it's actually, they said about, and they pinpointed it to like within 100 meters which is stupid accurate considering just how big everything is. But they said it was about, it was like right above, like, it might have been 100 meters above the sun's surface is actually where the true, like, center of our um, uh, solar system is. Because um, planets like um, Jupiter and to a lesser extent, um, was it Jupiter? Yeah, yeah, Jupiter's the dense one, and then Saturn's less dense. Um, but, like, big planets like that actually, like, affect our star, and it actually wobbles a little bit in the middle. So that's technically where the center of our solar system is. Real fascinating stuff. Oh, here we go. We've passed the uh, halfway point where uh, we're starting to slow down now. What did we hit? Like 730 C, I think? Ain't too bad. I think we've only been flying for... Oh, God, I can't even remember. 
I feel like I've been in this system an eternity. <laughs> but those juicy credits, they're so worth it. Gotta have those credits. <sighs> but yeah, that was pretty much it for me on the Steam sale. Um, a while back, I bought a board game um, pack. A uh, bunch of digital board games on Steam. Um, that was part of a Humble Bundle. Um, got around to playing some of those. Um, There's some interesting stuff. I played uh, Scythe, uh, which kind of reminded me of Twilight Imperium, um, which is another board game. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of like that, except on a much smaller scale. Seemed pretty interesting. Um, let's see. Um, Sterium was on there. That was an interesting one. Where you play as a psychic, um, and you're trying to figure out who killed uh, the ghost. Is trying to tell uh, you're, you're communicating with a ghost, and um, the ghost is trying to tell you who killed him and where and with what weapon. So it's kind of like a paranormal clue in a way. It's really fun. Uh, let's see what else. Um, there were a few other things on there too. Um, Splendor. Um, great game. I actually played that with some people from work, um, and we had a we had a blast playing that. Um, let's see what else. Oh, there were so many. Those are the ones that stood out. Um, and then I bought another um, bundle that had. Not take on Mars, but it was a Martian colony management game. Um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. It is think like SimCity, but like on Mars. Um, and what else? Um, Kerbal Space Program. I finally picked up Kerbal Space Program. Um, haven't played a lot of it, but I picked it up. Um, what else? Hmm. Uh, hmm. Those are the big ones that stood out. Oh, Observer! Yeah, yeah. So I picked up Observer, which is a um, the best way I can describe that game. And I haven't played much of it. I only played about maybe 30 minutes or so. Um, it's basically... Um, Polish Blade Runner, if you can think of that. Um, it's, uh, like a psychological horror game. It's from the same people that made, um, Layers of Fear, if anyone have, if anyone's played that one. Um, so it's like a first-person horror survival game-ish. Um, pretty good. I, I enjoyed it so far. Um, I've seen it's gotten mixed reviews, but my first impression was positive. Um, oh, and This War of Mine. I finally picked up This War of Mine. I've been I've been on my wish list for a couple years. I'm not exaggerating. It's been on there a couple of years. Um, and uh, I actually ended up playing that thing way longer than I had planned. Because <laughs> initially it was, okay, I'll play it for like maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, get it knocked off my um, unplayed list so I can kind of get a feel for it. Uh, I ended up playing it for like an hour. <laughs> So that's always a good sign. Um, and uh, if anyone's ever played that one, it's um, it's an indie title where you ma it's basically a resource management survival sim where you um, you have to help these um, displaced refugees in the middle of a civil war, um, and you have to like explore bombed out schools and abandoned neighborhoods and scavenge for supplies during the night and then during the day you're um, using the supplies that you gathered to build um, improvements to your house um, really good game um, definitely does not uh, glorify war in any way it's uh, quite an anti-war game um, highly recommend it if you like survival games um, really good Okay, so we are approaching the first planet in the system. Let's go ahead and 
Slow down a little bit. One, two, and three. Okay, those are our, our numbers. Gotta remember that. One, two, and three. And this was... <laughs> so I always love this about exploration. I, I love it's the... Um, it's always the systems you don't plan to go to that end up paying the biggest bounties, <laughs> i found. Um... Oh, wow, you can see that my paint's starting to chip a little on the corner there. Alright. Go ahead and kill the engines. Really? Okay, it must be less than 0.4. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like... 0.4 or less. Oops, wrong button. I forgot how to activate my probe scanner. So, if you're playing Elite and you're gonna find you're gonna run into this situation you're gonna run into situations where you have to be allied with a minor faction to um advance or you know there's um like the more the better reputation you have with a minor faction the better stuff you're gonna get and if that minor faction is aligned with one of the three major factions you're actually going to increase your rep with one of the three big ones um explore selling exploration data is the fastest way I've found to build rep. Um, so, you need about, I think, 8 million credits worth of data to bring yourself up from neutral to allied, or, or the equivalent. Some of them have different names for the same thing. Um, now, what's funny is... There's an engineer out here. Um, yeah, there are engineers out in Colonia. There's four of them. Um, okay, there's two. Um, so there's like four engineers out in Colonia. And the first engineer, um, you need to be rank. You need to be allied with the Colonial Council. Well, it just so happens the Colonial Council runs several of the pit stop stations along the Neutron, not the Neutron Highway, the uh, Colonial, hey, there's the Skull Nebula again. Sorry, Squirrel. Um, own, they operate several of the um, pit stop systems along the way from Seoul to Colonia. So um, I already have allied status with them. Um, so I'm gonna see when I get there, um, I'm gonna see if there are any minor faction, other minor factions that I can ally with, um, so I can just go ahead and have that rep. Because it, my rule of thumb is, if you're already allied with a faction, you might as well. Oh crap! There I go, running my yap and overshooting my planet. Um. So if you're already allied with a faction, it's almost a waste to sell more data to them. So you're better off just finding another faction you don't have a lot of rep with and just sell your data to them, get better rep. Because um, once you hit allied, the, I mean, you, I don't, you don't get more money. You get access to better missions, but you don't actually get more money from selling the data. So what's the point? Um, so it's best to take that data and spread it out amongst different factions. And I've already got a I've already got a spreadsheet, not a spreadsheet, but a um, notepad um, file open with the list of <laughs> um, factions I want to get allied with when I get back to the bubble. Because um, uh, system permits require you to. Um, 
usually be allied with a minor faction. Um, a lot of times, um, engineers won't, you won't get their invite mission until after you're allied with a particular faction, so, um, thankfully there's a list of all that stuff online, so I've, all right, let's go here. That should be good. And what are we at? Four. Boom. Now we wait. All right, so this is two. I can back up three. Then we can hop on the Neutron Star to our next destination. Okay, good. We got the efficiency bonus. And, oops. Three. Yep, that's three. You're not too far away. 1.2 thousand light seconds. All right, let me go see if the chat's done anything. All right, chat's been real quiet. Of course, I know some people prefer to watch them on YouTube, on the archive. Oh, um, so at the end of this stream, I've updated the last title card to show my uh, Twitter and YouTube channel. So you can always go there and see it. Plus, it's also go to the about section or if you're looking at a browser it's I don't know I, I don't like the mobile version of twitch I haven't used a twitch app on mobile but I don't like the the mobile website version because I can't find the about page or any of the other stuff and I'm sure it's um, none of the panel none of my panels are there either which I'm sure that's done for performance reasons but still annoying But anyway. Oh, damn it. Daydreaming again. Uh, loop of shame. Uh, I'm actually kind of tired of this system, to be honest. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was expecting to be in Colonia by now, but... Oh, so much money. I can't say no to this money. I'm like crawling up to this thing. Go a little faster, guys. There we go. Oh, yeah. All right. This should be at six. And let's see, let's go right here. See where that goes. <laughs> Almost reminds me of the intro to Gundam Wing. With the um, Operation M with the pods hitting Earth. Man, I haven't thought about that anime in a long time. All oh, right, <laughs> we're finally done with the system. I think I've been here like 30 minutes. Oops. Wrong button. All right. Well, I'm sure the paycheck will be worth it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can actually see the paint chipping. I don't know why I'm pointing, but you can see where the paint's chipping on my ship. 
I think my paint integrity is at like, um, oh, 60, I think. I'll have to look. It's probably lower now. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. I've already used up a lot of time just going through. There we go. Alright. Locked in. Mm. Yeah, that button's acting up. So here's an interesting bit of trivia. I've shown you before how there's a ship integrity repair section and then there's like a paint repair section um originally um paint and hull integrity were one in the same and so as your ship um would wear down over time from just you know forces being stressed um on it and the way the developers um explained it was it's just ship wear and tear so like, you know, with your car and everything, I have to have it serviced every once in a while. And what that mechanic does is, um, when it's at zero from what I read, um, your ship, your hull integrity is only about 75% as good, or about 70% as good as normal. So your ship's easier to kill if you don't keep up with the maintenance. Um, thankfully, it doesn't look like it's um, doesn't do anything outside of that. Which, uh, that would really screw over explorers, because, uh, we can't, you can't fix that when you're out here. Alright, let me go grab our next waypoint. So, um, and also apparently before that mechanic was introduced, the, um, the, uh, ship integrity mechanic, um, ships used to be really expensive to repair. So a lot of times what pilots would end up doing is, um, if their ship was so far gone, it was actually cheaper for them to self-destruct and then use their insurance to buy a new ship, which completely defeated the purpose of um, the whole system. So um, that's when they introduced the ship integrity um, mechanic. So I'm not saying I completely agree with the decisions they've made um, with it, but it's certainly, uh, I, I just hate that it's hidden. I don't know. I guess once you reach a, I guess just like in life, once you've reached a certain like level of wealth, um, the expenses that you thought were expensive aren't really as bad. <laughs> waypoint
All right, we got like five more of these jumps. Oh, look, you can actually see the Colonia, Neb Colonia Nebula from here. That's what it's called. Here we go. Let me check my shit real quick. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, I got maybe one more jump in me. One more neutron jump, and then I'm going to stop and get some gas. Which I can say, because hydrogen's technically a gas. It's not petro, though. Or petroleum. Or diesel. It's hydrogen. Nothing out here. Okay, so I'm roughly at about halfway, just under half my fuel, so let's be right back. All right. There we go. Oops. Not what I wanted. Okay. Let's go here. G. Be a fine girl. That's it. Yeah, I got a lot of bookmarks now. Um, so EDSM has a uh, list of points of interest with um uh, basically they have a list of like all the commanders using edsm who have visited so it's kind of like um oh what's the equivalent it's almost like geocaching in a way hmm? was my throttle not up okay never mind um so um i've incorporated those into my journey to beagle point Oh, I almost dread this place having, like, a dozen terraformable worlds. It's like, oh, no. Ah, uh, so much money, but such a time investment. Come on. There we go. Alright, let's get above the, uh orbital plane here. Alright, that should be good enough. Alright, what's out here? Ooh, icy body, rocky bodies, rocky bodies, some high metal content worlds, and some gas giants. Uh, metal rich bodies. A lot of high metal content worlds. You know what? Yeah, let's just go ahead and just grab these. We only have one star, so we're not going to be traveling like 300,000 light years anywhere. Light seconds anywhere. 
Oh god, 300,000 light years. Oh. Milky Way Galaxy isn't even that wide. So, that's a kind of a a small bone I want to pick with Star Trek Voyager. So, Voyager was supposed to be lost. It was supposed to be like in the Delta Quadrant. Um, like, was it 77,000 light years away from Earth? Okay. Well, the furthest point you can be in Elite Dangerous, which is supposed to replicate a, it's supposed to be a one-to-one -one scale replica of the um, Milky Way galaxy. The furthest point you can be is like in the 65,000 range. So someone, someone goofed. <laughs> Um, now, granted, Voyager came out in the, like, uh, mid-90s, so maybe astronomers have, hadn't determined the exact um, uh, diameter of the galaxy. Okay, I'll, I'll give them that. Or maybe they, uh, they just like the sound of 77,000. I'm not sure. You know, that'd be a good thing to look up, actually. I want to see when... First of all, I want to see what the actual diameter of the Milky Way galaxy is. Well, not diameter. Uh, let's go with radius. Well, no, no, diameter's fine. Yeah. Well, no, that wouldn't even be true. Hmm. Because of where um, our where the solar where where the solar system is in relation to, hmm, I don't know. I think a better thing would be to find out the furthest point from Earth um, any one body has been observed within our galaxy, because they've. Um, there's been plenty of um, discoveries. Um, I mean, other galaxies have been discovered, so. Um, not the only ones. All right. Okay, none of these look promising. Not map, not map. But looks can be deceiving. I've, I've learned that. High metal, high metal. Not yet mapped. Not yet mapped. I mean, a lot of high metal worlds. Like this is this is good stuff. Yeah. Not yet mapped. Not yet mapped. Not yet mapped. Not yet mapped. Not yet mapped, not yet mapped, not yet mapped, okay. Well, all right. There's our little friend, <laughs> three light years away. Just the tiniest little, tiniest little hop. Like, I think I might have burned more fuel traveling. Well, no, that doesn't make any sense. I doubt I've burned that much fuel. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if I've ever explained this, but... So, the fat line below the skinny line, that's your fuel reserve. And that's where your FSD pulls its fuel from. Right above that is your ship's actual, like, um, the fuel tank. And um, when that drops, um, it pulls from the fuel reserves. So um, so don't freak out about the top little line. It's, it's the thick line underneath that you have to worry about. High metal content, icy bodies. 
18 of them, huh? I mean, that is a lot of bodies. They might be... Oh, okay, we have another... Okay, this probably has a bunch of ice planets. Fine. Oh, maybe not. Carbon dioxide. Wow. Methane rich. Yeah, these are the ice bodies. Alright, now we're just down to high metal content. I mean, the odds are pretty good. Nice high content of... Nice high content. Nice high number of high metal content planets. So, we'll see. Hmm. Uh, looks like my... Right joysticks developing a little bit of drift along the um, one of its axes. I'll have to adjust the dead zone. All right. Let's see. Anything good? No. 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 Nope. Nope. Alright, this one looks promising. Nope. Must be too close to the star. Okay, well. Oh well. We tried, right? At least we know. That's that's some closure right there. We're not going to wonder about the uh, terraformable planets that could have been. All right. All right. Let's get... Let's get... We're getting closer. We can see it. All right. Oh, look at that. We are all real close. All right. I think we've got um, two more neutron stars. Oh, yeah, you can see it right there. Um, just to the right of... Um, our destination. I think that's the uh, Colonial Nebula. Well, it's not... I don't think it's called that officially, but I think that's what everyone else calls it. So, when someone's referring to Colonia, usually... So... They could be referring to just the Colonia system, but there's actually a small region of habitable, um, habit, bleh, of um, inhabited planets around that area. So they could also be talking about the Colonial region as well. 
Um, and I think there's about a dozen star systems that are uh, settled around the Colonia system. And uh, a lot of um, a lot of commanders come out here to escape the like political nonsense because it's all a completely independent um, region of space. So some people, some, you know, some commanders want to be out on the uh, edge of the frontier and, you know, get away from all the politics. Plus, you know, if you've got a price on your head <laughs> with one of the three major factions, it's a good place to hang out. So it's kind of like the Wild West in a lot of ways. And as I mentioned before, there are four engineers out here. Um, all right. Oh yeah, we're getting closer. Okay, I think one more. Okay. There we go. Oops. All right, this will be our last neutron star. Actually, yeah, you can see how close we are. There's the Colonia Nebula. And then right out there on the edge, that's the Colonia system. So we're going to we're going to go there. And then we're going to jump the Colonia system. Yeah, we've got plenty of fuel too, so I'm not worried about it. I don't I think we'll just hit like the halfway point on our reserves. So, we're good. There we go. Actually, how's my... How are my modules looking? Yeah, 91%. Yeah, we're good. Alright. Anything good out here? High metal content. High metal content. Gas giants. Let's go ahead and scan these real quick. That one's got a ring. Wait, who discovered that? The infinity symbol. Oh, huh. neat. I didn't know uh, you could do... Uh, <laughs> like... Um, uh, Unicode characters, I guess. Yeah. They'd have to have support for... Uh, different languages and stuff. Well, Commander Infinity Symbol... These look promising. A couple gas giants. Nope. Nope. Okay. Easy enough. I can live with that. Right, we are good to go. All right, let's see. I don't even have to take my headset off for this one. 
There she is, Colonia. Oh yeah, plot route. Colonia, here we come. <sighs> so this is officially the end of our first leg of the journey. Well, I guess it'll be official once I dock, <laughs> but we've, um, yeah, we finished the first leg after this. Now I still have to go to Sagittarius A and then eventually to Beagle Point, but you know what? Small milestone in our journey. Boom. Scoopable star. Very nice. Oh, okay. Looks like there's some player, um, I don't know why I'm qualifying that with player. Um, <laughs> looks like there are some, uh, couple of, um, fleet carriers. You can always tell it's a fleet carrier because it's got that serial number at the end. Whoa, okay, there's a lot going on here. Got some rocky bodies, got some asteroid clusters, concentrated signal sources. Fleet carrier. I had a feeling there'd be a lot of fleet carriers out this way. Yeah. Oh, damn, there's a lot of fleet carriers here. Good grief. You guys know that, uh, like, not. Like, I don't know. Wow, there is a lot going on here. Look at all these signals. Okay, this is getting a little ridiculous. Um, tell you what. Let's go to the nav beacon. Um, hopefully, the scanning the nav beacon will at least get some of those signal sources cleaned up, so we don't have to deal with them because it's annoying, <laughs> say the least. Well, the good news is um, I'm already allied with um, Colonial um, Colonial Council. Yeah, Colonial Council. So, they should show up green. There's Colonial 1. But yeah, Nav Beacon, scanning the Nav Beacon uh, reveals all the uh, signal sources. Hope Mobile! Gravitas? Gravit. Asteria? The Citadel of Ricks. Huh, okay. Rick and Morty fan, clearly. Alright. There's our nav beacon. Let's scan this guy. Real quick. Tojo's Folly, Storm Out. Okay, system data updated. Cool. Just out of curiosity, who all. Yeah, no one friendly. Alright. 
That should help make things a little faster. But yeah, um, so Colonia is pretty much the um, hub of player activity for uh, the Outer Rim, I guess, if you want to call it that. That's better, I guess. I don't know. Okay, so apparently it didn't pick up the fleet carriers. Great. Oh, wow. Well. All right, well, let's just focus on... Yeah, I'll just ignore those other signals because I'd be here all day just scanning stuff. Content world. So, you know what? Uh, I think a better use of my time would be finding a station I can land on. Where's Jock Station? Smack City. UNSC California. Good grief. Caroline. What the hell? Oh. Alright, where the hell's Jock Station? Colonia Orbital? Uh, Colonial Council's docked there, but I want to go to Jock Station. That's the fancy one. Colonia Hub. Freedom class survey vessel. Dove. Where the hell is it? Colonia applied research. Where the hell is it? Damn, I feel like I'm in some kind of madhouse. Wonder, yeah, these are all fleet. Actually, let's do this. Um, there we go. There. There we go. That's what I wanted. So that's the first time in my career of playing Elite Dangerous where I had to use the filter button. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, Cause yeah, this is kinda dumb. So what's interesting about fleet carriers is they persist in both the console and PC version of the game. Um, even though players can't directly interact with each other, um, they still benefit from um, 
any uh, changes to the galaxy because um, they share the same uh, background simulator. But um, there's some history with uh, Jock Station, so um, apparently it malfunctioned and was lost, and nobody knew where the hell it was until somebody found it, and uh, that's when um, Colonia was renamed or named. Yeah, there's just so many fleet carriers here. This is ridiculous. I feel like I'm at some kind of weird... Um, look at them. They're like all clustered around there. Oh, man. Let's get... Whoa, fuck. Shit. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I really hope this isn't a player. Come on, girl. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Someone tried to pull me out of uh, Super Cruise. <laughs> I'm thinking it's uh, NPC because normally um, it's not that easy. Well, I've never had a player actually do that to me. Right. Oh, gotta slow down a little bit. There we go. Let's see here. Contacts. Pure curler. Sidewinder. Cobra. And yeah, I play an open. Because I like to live dangerously. Okay. All right, I'm within range to request docking. Thank you. Landing pad 23, 2, 3. All right, 2, 3, hey, there's 2, 3 right in front of me. Good deal. Deploying landing gear. Need to maintain approach. But yeah, this is a jock station. Engines disengaged. Let's repair the ship. Refuel for what that's worth. All right. Nice and snug. Advanced maintenance. Let's go ahead. 92%. Let's go ahead and fix that up. Okay, so I was at 62% paint damage. So I kind of want to see what my ship looks like. Yeah. 
seen better days. I'm going to go ahead and fix the paint because we're at the end of um, our first leg. So we'll go ahead and just fix that up. There we go. Okay, I'm not going to sell the data here, but I just want to see how much money we got from that um, system. 7.6 million, and it looks like... Is that the system? No, that could no, no, that, that wasn't the system. There's another one down here somewhere. Okay, 4.7. I think... One, two, three, four. I think this is the one. Yeah, yeah, this looks right. 4.7 million. Yep, yep. D22236. I said eight earlier, but it's actually six. So, yeah, you know what? 4.7 million. I think it's worth it. All right. I'm curious if that mission's available. Uh, investors, investors, investors. Help uh, financial. No. Colonial Council here. Here we go. Engineer invitation. Neil Brandon, Starport, Colonial Dream arrival. In the rat retrail system? Cool. Go ahead and pick that pick up that mission so I can just take care of that. Wait a minute, so who controls the station? Oh, hello. Oh, okay, so Jox is neutral. Okay, with me. So screw it, I'm gonna go ahead and just sell my data then to the station, cause that'll raise my rep with Jox. That'll pretty damn near get me to allied. Hmm. Uh, no first discoveries, unfortunately, but I wasn't surprised. Let's see. Oh, did I actually get uh, cordial friendly? Okay, so I'm not allied with them, but pretty damn close. Um, let's see here. Actually, that hasn't updated yet. Oh, well. All right. Well, we made it. That's the uh, end of leg one of our journey. Um, let's see, how long do I have that mission for? 23 hours, I might as well just go pick that one up. Yeah. I might as well just pick up that. Okay. You guys want to hang out with me for a few more minutes while I uh, take a quick stop around the corner? Cosmically speaking. Hopefully that system's a little less crazy. Alright. Turn that on. So players can see me. Though it's pretty bright out here, so I'm speeding. Yeah, we'll turn that down a little bit. There we go. Okay, you can scan me all you want. I don't have anything. Alright, 
medium security. Yeah, it's just a little skip. Engineering invitation contract. I mean, hey, I might as well unlock the, um, at least unlock this engineer. But he, then he's going to have like a quest for me to do something. Oh, there it is. Colonial Dream. Okay, you must be in orbit around this moon. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Just aim for that purple dot. Alright, and then we'll just hold fast. there. Boom. All right. Ah, perfect. <laughs> We're on the correct side for the mail slot. Very good. Ah, it's Colonial Council. I can tell because they're using the allied um Four, five. Where the hell is four, five? Oh, damn. Uh, uh, am I missing something? Am I missing something here? Yeah, four, five, okay. Three, ah, there's four, five. Huh, how'd I miss that? Well, damn. Eh, well. Damn it. All right, let's turn this quest in. Mission, not quest, mission. All right, turn this in real quick. Incoming 
message. I earned you an audience with an engineer. Someone will contact you directly with further details. Sweet. There he is. Invitation from Mel Brandon. Welcome to join me at my base and discuss the details of how we can work together. A marker for my location has been added to your galaxy map. Sweet. And if we look... We can inch. I didn't want to look at that. I don't really care about that. Uh, engineers. So I've got Felicity Farseer, Martuk, both at level five. Um, got the invitation for Marco, which I think he's one of, there we go, Miss Mel Brandon right there. Fulfill your initial contract by delivering 100,000 credits and bounty vouchers. Oh, so they just made that generic, okay, cool. Um, I'm not gonna mess around with that, but I've already got his invitation, so. I'm good for now. All right. Well, I think that's it for right now. I want to thank all of you for watching. Um, you can subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at, at RedFalcon2K6 for uh, updates on the stream, uh, any delays, uh, additional streams. Um, you know, cancellations, that sort of stuff. Um, this stuff's also archived on my YouTube channel. Um, mainly just search for um, Red Falcon Elite Dangerous. You'll, you'll find me. There's another Red Falcon, but he doesn't play these kind of games, so just ignore that guy. Um, but yeah. Um, thank everyone for watching, and... Uh, be safe out there, and we'll do this again same time, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, next Wednesday. Take care.